Frogman, but instead of purchasing something from him, the creature launched an attack. The system notified our protagonist that his durability had decreased by three points, emphasizing the importance of his remaining durability as it approached zero, which would result in his demise. The system also revealed that durability could be increased using points. To add to the predicament, three frogmen appeared and began attacking him. Our protagonist felt lost and unsure of what to do. Desperate for a solution, he noticed something written in his stats, blessing. Seeking answers, he inquired whether it granted him some form of magic, and the system confirmed his assumption. Determined to defend himself, our protagonist focused his concentration and acquired the skill of barrier. With this newfound ability, he sent the four frogmen flying backward, feeling a surge of power and triumph. Laughing with excitement, he proclaimed that this was just the beginning of his legendary vending machine tale. However, his elation was short-lived as he noticed a rapid deduction of points caused by the continuous maintenance of the barrier skill. The frogmen persistently attacked the barrier from outside, intensifying the drain on his points. Hours passed, and as our protagonist's points neared depletion, the frogmen eventually grew bored and left, and he was left with only 311 points. But then something unexpected happened. The next day, Human Girl appeared before our protagonist, initially assuming an attacking stance. However, realizing the absence of the frogmen, she let out a sigh of relief. Exhausted and hungry, she began to cry, expressing her frustration at losing her food bag and feeling inadequate as a hunter. But then she noticed our protagonist and came close to him. Inquisitively, she examined our protagonist, perceiving it as a metallic stone monument that somehow contained consumable items. To her astonishment, a voice greeted her with a hello, emanating from our protagonist. Encouraged by this interaction, our protagonist instructed her to insert a coin to proceed. Observing a narrow hole, she inserted a copper coin. To her dismay, the coin was instantly rejected, indicating that the machine only supported Earth's currency, and the copper coin belonged to an unknown currency. In response, our protagonist acquired a new skill called Coin Conversion. Utilizing this skill, a message flashed, requesting the insertion of a silver coin to proceed. The yellow-haired girl, although considering it expensive, decided it was better to spend the silver coin rather than suffer from hunger. With a mixture of hope and anticipation, she inserted the silver coin into the vending machine. As the silver coin was inserted into our protagonist, a surge of energy coursed through him, reminiscent of the feeling of flying. With a warm smile, our protagonist dispensed a cup of warm corn soup, which the yellow-haired girl eagerly picked up. She expressed delight as she took a sip, exclaiming that it was the tastiest thing she had ever eaten. Our protagonist felt a profound sense of joy at witnessing her enjoyment. Encouraged by the delectable corn soup, the girl proceeded to use five more silver coins to satisfy her hunger. Once her stomach was full, she nestled beside our protagonist and drifted off into a peaceful sleep. Throughout the night, our protagonist faithfully protected her, activating the barrier ability to ensure her safety. When morning arrived, the girl expressed her gratitude to our protagonist, acknowledging that if her belly hadn't been filled, she would have continued eating throughout the night. Surprising her, our protagonist replied with a thank you, leaving the girl taken aback. Curiosity sparked within her as she questioned whether our protagonist could speak. However, our protagonist remained silent, prompting her to recall legends of items having their own consciousness. Eager to find out, she proposed a test. If our protagonist could only speak certain words, he could confirm it by saying, Hello. The girl's face lit up with joy when our protagonist responded with a hello. With a kind smile, she introduced herself as Lamis, extending her friendly nature towards our protagonist. Lamis then suggested that if our protagonist liked her name, he could say hello for yes and something else for no, establishing a unique method of communication between them. Then they chatted for hours, Lamis inquiring about our protagonist's name and whether he had an important mission. Our protagonist responded with a too bad, indicating that he couldn't reveal his name and wasn't on any significant mission. Lamis then asked if our protagonist was lonely, and he replied with a hello, signifying a resounding yes. In a bold move, Lamis asked if he wanted to accompany her, and our protagonist eagerly responded with a yes. With a bright smile, Lamis grasped our protagonist and, with an incredible burst of strength, lifted him onto her back. Our protagonist was stunned, wondering how she was able to carry him considering his weight of over 500 kilograms. They embarked on their journey together, 
with Lammas taking charge and moving with determination. Throughout their journey, whenever hunger struck, Lammas would use one silver coin to enjoy a cup of corn soup from our protagonist. However, our protagonist felt guilty that he could only offer corn soup, as it wasn't as filling as he desired. Using his points, he decided to purchase chips and emitted a glow, shocking Lammas. Excitedly, she indulged in the chips, finding them incredibly delicious, causing her hand to not stop as she devoured them. As they approached the village gate, the guards intercepted Lammas, expressing their concern. They shared their worries about others who had ventured with her and never returned. Lammas acknowledged the potential danger, but she reassured them that as long as our protagonist, the vending machine, was with her, she was safe. The guards were puzzled by the presence of the metallic statue. Curiosity peaked, the guards inquired about the statue's origin, and Lammas proceeded to explain the entire story. She asked if she could keep the vending machine, and the guards clarified that anyone who discovered an item in a dungeon became its rightful owner. Intriguingly, the guards pondered if they could also make purchases from the vending machine. Lammas turned to our protagonist, and with a sense of anticipation, he responded with a hello, indicating that they indeed could make purchases. Hearing this, the guards were astonished to witness this interaction. Realizing that our protagonist was a magical item with consciousness, they suggested that selling the vending machine could bring Lammas a fortune. In a burst of determination, Lammas passionately declared that she would never sell our protagonist. Then, after drinking the corn soup, the guards also felt like they were in heaven and asked her to bring the vending machine to them sometimes, and she agrees. Inside the inn, Lammas is overjoyed to reunite with her friend Manami, who is relieved to see her safe. Lammas excitedly shares the full story of her adventures and expresses her plan to bring the vending machine to her hometown. Word about the extraordinary vending machine quickly spreads throughout the town, drawing a flood of people eager to make purchases. And throughout the entire day, customers flock to buy from him. His sales skyrocket, accumulating over 3,000 points and unlocking more than 400 new items. With a smile, Boxo adds a new item to his inventory, confident that it will amaze the townspeople. The guards that we saw before arrive at the scene, surprised to see the array of new items. Although the price of three silver coins is considered expensive, they are unable to resist the temptation and decide to make a purchase. They select the canned Odin, and as they take a bite, their minds are blown away by the heavenly taste. As the scene shifts, we witness Lammas happily carrying Boxo on her back, traveling to a destination with a sense of purpose. She affectionately addresses him as Boxo, finding it more convenient than referring to him as a metal statue all the time. In the midst of their journey, Boxo realizes that being a vending machine isn't such a bad life after all. Content with their partnership and the experiences they have shared, they continue onward, embracing the adventure that awaits. I'm good.